Hi, my name is Thomas Chase, and in this video we're going to discuss uh, travel time reliability analysis for the HCM. In order to do a reliability analysis, you first need an existing seed file. For this example, I'm going to open a seed file from I-40 in North Carolina that we've worked on in the past. Here you can see the seed file is loaded with all the inputs ready to perform the reliability analysis. This facility contains a total of 34 segments and has 24 analysis periods from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. To begin the reliability analysis, we go to the reliability analysis toolbox and click generate. For this example, we have a total of five tabs in our scenario generator because we do not have managed lanes. If we did, we would have an extra tab. In the first tab, properties, we have the high-level information about the scenarios we want to create, the reliability reporting period, as well as the seed date for our seed file, the types of events that we would like to model, as well as the random number we would like to use if we want to have a random number or a specific number. In the second tab, we have the demand variation across the scenarios. This large table shows the demand multipliers for each combination of day of the week and month. We can click on urban default values to populate it with the defaults from national data sets. We can also select certain days of the week to be modeled or exclude certain days from the reliability reporting period. After we put all our in-demand inputs in, we can click on the next tab to put in the work zones we'd like to model during the reliability reporting period. For this example, I'll make a work zone during the month of March That is a shoulder closure in an urban area with plastic drum barrels. We need to select the segments that it affects, which we can put in here, segment number 20 to segment number 22, and that it impacts all analysis periods. Then we click Add, and now we can select our work zone and see that the impacts it will have on capacity, speed, and demand. Once we've created all of our work zones, we can click on the Incidents tab. Here we have a table for the incident frequencies by month, the impacts that each incident type has on capacity, free flow speed, demand, and lane uh, count, as well as the incident duration distributions. For this example, we don't have any known data for incident frequencies. So instead, we can click on Calculate Frequencies. If we know incident rates or crash rates, we can enter them there. But here we're going to use the HERS model to estimate our incident rates. First, we need a crash to incident ratio, which here we're using 4.9, and the percent of traffic that travels during our study period, which we're going to put 25%. And we can use we can click this button to use HERS to calculate the incident frequency. Once we have our frequencies, we can use national default data for our incident durations or data that we have collected on our own. Finally, we need to input the weather probabilities for our facility. Here we have different categories of weather and each month we have a specific probability for that weather type as well as duration. Here we can select historical data for major cities in the United States. We'll click on Syracuse and extract long-term regional weather data. This will populate the probabilities. Here you can see there's plenty of snow in Syracuse. Once we have our weather data in, we can now either generate our scenarios or generate and run scenarios. Now that FreeVal is in a Java version, the run is very quick, so we'll click Generate and Run. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that we've generated a total of 240 scenarios. For each scenario, you can hover your mouse over the scenario name to see all the different characteristics of that scenario. For instance, this first one here has light snow and light to medium snow, as well as an incident. 
we click on the scenario, the operational results of that scenario will show up on the right. We can look at the result contours to see the speeds for each analysis period at each segment throughout the facility. As we select new scenarios, we can see this change. For instance, in this scenario, we have a lot of congestion starting at segments 13, backing up all the way to segment 4. In addition to looking at the results of a single scenario, we can also compare scenarios. In order to compare scenarios, right-click on the scenario you'd like to compare and click Add to Scenario. For this case, we'll compare this to the seed file. Now we click on the Compare tab, and we can see that we have a much longer average travel time in scenario number three compared to the seed file, about two minutes longer. In addition to looking at individual scenarios and comparing scenarios, we can look at our overall reliability analysis. We'll go up to the reliability analysis box, click summary. Here we have some summary information at the top about our analysis as well as some descriptive statistics about the reliability analysis. Below we have charts showing the probability distribution function and the cumulative distribution function for our reliability analysis. Next, if we have field measured data that we'd like to compare to calibrate our reliability analysis, we can click on Show TTI Percentile Detail, and we can input our distribution here in this column. Doing so, we'll create a new line on our cumulative distribution function to show how close the reliability analysis is to the field data. Finally, we can look at our scenario summaries table to examine individual scenarios. We can sort them by travel time index or vehicle hours of delay. And we can click on show scenario event summary. And here it will pull up a table showing the incident events that were modeled by month and type, as well as the weather events by month and type. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like any assistance with FreeVal, feel free to contact us at the email shown.